What's up, Neo Soul? We are at Venice Beach. You hear me? It's cold out here. It's wet out here. But it is also fun out here because this is Neo Soul Spoken Word Variety Show. And we are in California doing the big. I'm hanging out with my girl Gina, who is about to spit some fire lyrics to your membrane. Let you know where Sister Girl's coming from. Gina, how you feeling? I'm straight. How you? I'm doing good. You've been out here doing your thing with us in Neo Soul, pulling out just celebrities like yo I'm trying to get at you now you done chilled out then done the thing now you about to come out here and express yourself poetically can we get that from you yes you can go ahead y'all this is Gina about to do it to y'all on the only way she can do it I thank you all right I'm gonna do a piece called because I love him and this is just what women go through taking the abuse and and whatnot because I love him. Oh, we'll get your ass killed. Keep loving that man. Just get you a will. Keep telling yourself that he loves you back. Medea called, said your man, he's on crack. On crack, on crack. Keep taking those blows, collecting those scars. Fuck who's from Venus and fuck who's from Mars. If you gotta chill in the coffin while he's behind bars, all because you love him, uh, because I, I love him, uh, will rob your esteem. You'll give up on your visions, give up on your dreams. Instead, you will fix what's wrong in his life while playing the role of his mother and wife. You start gaining your weight, quit doing your nails, quit doing your hair, you're dressing like hell, you becoming just who he wants you to be. One day, look in the mirror, You'll see fucking ugly all because you love him uh, Because I, I love him uh, Will change your whole life You'll find he is no husband You'll find still you're his wife You'll start missing your folks, your family, your friends Fool keeps you away Away from them, now you're losing control Can't think for yourself and no one will hear you When you scream for help Cause you keep going back when you do get away Now no one believes a damn thing you say All because you love him uh, Because I, I love him you stand by his side when the trick goes to jail you ride or you die you feel like a queen helping your man and don't miss a visit do all you can now your man will seem different while he's behind bars he'll promise the moon he'll promise the stars he'll talk about Jesus like he never did before he got locked up jail talks what it is and to all this to all this you've been blind but you need to take a peek you see your man's been out of jail married to another bitch two weeks man Fuck because you love him. <laughs> Thank you. You can take it or leave it. It's a lyrical pill. Do you want it or need it to feel what is true? Just take it and know that what's here or here is just a lyrical pill. Some you can taste. Hi, we're Phyllis and Leah Johnson, and we are the producers of I'm Through With White Girls, The Inevitable Undoing of Jay Brooks. We decided we would interview each other for you today on Neo Soul. <laughs> and um, so the first question I have for you, Phyllis, is um, what was your inspiration for getting involved in the film? My inspiration for getting involved in the film was um, it's really important to me that we continue to create um, multicultural content that's exciting and um, has a social message but is also commercially accessible to everyone. So I felt this, this script, I'm Through With White Girls, was one that um, definitely uh, entertained and also invited um, the viewer to use the script or the storyline as a primer for that that discussion about race that is one that I think everyone wants to have in the US especially and of course in many other countries where there are, are mixtures of cultures and uh, so I saw it as a really effective springboard commercial commercially wrapped springboard for that conversation and that was my inspiration excellent well maybe actually I can jump in and you can think of All the right. next question and what say your inspiration? oh gosh my inspiration um, actually, it's funny. It was a lot the same as yours. We're twins, in case you didn't know. Um, it was a lot the same of your, as yours, but um, one of the interesting things for me was that um, a friend of mine wrote uh, the script. 
And I had been looking um, for a script for myself as an actress. We're, we're both actresses as well as producers. And I'd been looking for one that I could do that would, you know, have me as one of the leads, but maybe not the lead, um, so that I could handle, like, producing and um, acting at the same time. And when we read I'm Through with White Girls that my friend Courtney Lilly um, wrote, I knew right away that it was a really good script and that it was something that could totally um, achieve what we had wanted to do as producers and at the same time give um, me an opportunity to do some acting. And I don't know if I'm ready for the end of my natural born bachelor life. You deserve better than this, I know. But more so, you deserve better than me. Jay? Jay. You didn't leave her a letter, did you? Well, I'm not doing anyone any favors by sticking in a relationship that I know isn't going to work. You've been playing around with too many of them white girls. That's why you can't settle down. Mm -hmm. Are you color struck? No. The first woman I ever kissed was a sister. Boy, your mama don't count. <laughs> <laughs> How is Operation Brown Sugar going? Dude! What? I had to tell somebody. I've got a job, an apartment, no kids, and I've never been to jail. I'll have them lined up like jet centerfolds. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean any of that. Don't listen to me. <laughs> It's not about color or class. You're just afraid to commit. I'm pulling for you to find somebody that you love so much, you can't even help it. I was born in Canada. Canada? Does that make you African-Canadian? Actually, I'm African-Canadian, because my mother's white and my dad is black. Yeah, I didn't know black girls grew blue hair. Well, I didn't know you could smoke a cigarette through a straw. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, there's something so massively wrong with her. Jay, you say that about every girl you date. You are immature. You have issues with commitment. You have a silly job, silly friends. Go. You're cheap, and your comprehension of romance is a joke. I really don't see black chicks digging this guy. And no. you are. I don't. question for you. I've okay. forgotten what our next question was. I'm just going to jump on in with my own question, which is, um, for you as an actor and uh, stepping into the realm of producing, I know it's something you've done uh, for a, a long time <laughs> with me, um, but I know I know you've done it for a long time uh, on your own on projects that were meaningful. What, what were the challenges that you faced um, as an actor producing? That's your own work. Such a good question. Probably the biggest challenge um, that I could have faced would have been um, not having the room as an actor to really work on the role because I was spending so much time on the producing. And um, I, I can actually say, though, that it was so much easier to be an actor when I had my twin sister with me. It was like I got to clone myself. Because she can do everything I can do, kind of everywhere. So what was awesome is when we were working together, um, I got a chance to be an actress. And it let the two of us really achieve a quality piece of work and uh, quality acting as well, which is um, really the biggest thing for me. Um, and so that was one of the challenges I thought that could have been there but wasn't. Probably the very biggest challenge was finding the money for the film. It was raised all independently um, through independent financiers and people who believe in independent film. And uh, that's the kind of work that we want to do, is films that, quite frankly, wouldn't otherwise get made, but they're quality projects. Um, okay, that's a great answer. <laughs> um, let's see, what else did I want to know? Um, well, or maybe actually you can talk a little bit, I've got a question for you. Okay. Um, you can talk a little bit about um, how we went about finding um, our cast and our crew and the process, how long it took to make the film. Often people okay. ask that. Um, well, it took us, we shot for 21 and a half days and then we did reshoots all in all included, it was 24 days of shooting. Mm -hmm. um, our cast was uh, came from some really great advice that we've both gotten at different points in our lives, but um, if you cast well, then you're gonna have a great 
performance. And that's a casting director's idea that they, you know, put on to actors, and we as actors know about that. It's also true when you're producing. If you cast your crew very well, mm. then um, you're definitely going to have uh, a quality team that's going to put together a quality project. Yeah. And um, that's what we really did, having worked for so many years as actors. Um, one thing you know when you're an actor is who's not working. <laughs> because you guys are having lunch on Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> and uh, that was great because we actually knew who we could go to when you've worked. It's true, people hire their friends because they've worked with them and they can count on them. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we did. We hired a lot of people that we'd worked with before. Um, and from from our team to, to our that is to say, our crew to our cast. It was all people that we'd worked with before, um, or mostly. And actually, um, I can segue to then talk a little bit about our director, who sure. was the crown, uh, crown, crown jewel, jewel in our piece. Um, the director's name is Jennifer Sharp, and she's phenomenal. I'm sure you'll find an interview with her as well. Um, very informative. Um, she came on board. She had cast Phyllis in a short film that she had done in New York, and she'd recently moved to Los Angeles when we were looking for funding. And so she came to a fundraiser that we put together. And um, then when uh, we were getting the, the script in shape and doing notes she was one of the one of the few people that were willing to read it multiple times and continue to give good notes and um, she was like look when you start looking for a director uh, I'd love to be considered and she did a wonderful short film called Boxed which I is on the festival circuit now um, JenniferSharp.com and uh, she's wonderful and her film Boxed is fantastic and I thought it was very much in the spirit of I'm through with white girls and thought that um, as a worst case scenario I'd have a, a good little piece for an hour and a half but that if I you know calculated correctly Correctly, she would be, you know, she would sort of really take wings and, and flight with uh, with the, uh, the the opportunity to do a feature, which she did. And so we got very lucky to have her on board. I'm Jennifer Sharp, the director. And I'm Courtney Lilly. I wrote it. And what was the motivation behind this film? Uh, long story short, it was uh, there's a band from Detroit called the Dirt Bombs, and they wrote a song called "I'm Through with White Girls," and I said that's a, that's an interesting idea. And then took some stuff from my life and some friends' lives and wrote a movie that uh, Jen and Anthony and Leah and Ryan executed flawlessly. Is this your first time writing a movie? Uh, yeah, I wrote this years ago, six or seven years ago. And so that was the first feature late thing that I've written, yes. so And I work in TV now, so you know I've written other stuff since then. So how excited are you to actually have it just manifest to what it is from six years ago to right now? It's uh, it's stunning. It's crazy. It's like, you know, it's it's something where you're living by yourself. You're 20-something years old. You're writing in, into a vacuum. You don't know who's going to respond to it or anything like that. And then you're in a theater, and people are laughing at the right points, and people are, you know, like there's a moment where there's a thing at the end, kind of a little, I'm not going to ruin anything, but there's a little thing at the end, and everybody kind of gasps a little bit every time. And it surprises me every time that yeah, people gasp. I, know, and I, I, know, I, I like, I, like come on, you've seen that coming a mile away. And they do. And so reactions like that are fun. So Now, for you, Miss Sharp, you are so sharp that you took his writing and put it together so eloquently. How did you do that? You made really good <laughs> What? Yeah, well, first of all, it wasn't hard. Uh, it starts with really great characters, and the characters in this film are really, really unique. And when you have that, people want to see it. The audience is ready to be with you. I mean, the audience, just from the characters, the audience is ready to be with you from the start. So I had an easy start. And then um, one of my strengths as a director, I know, is working with actors. And I used to study acting, so it was really... So I spent the time to make sure I had the right actors to jump in the characters, and once I had that, like it really came together. Like, so have you produced? I mean, um, directed any other films aside from this one? This is my first feature film. I've done two short films, and uh, very proud of them. My last short film was Boxed, and it's still uh, doing the festival circuit right now. Actually, it's screening next week in Santa Monica, so I'll be at a festival with my short next week. So, do you have an email address or website also? I am. I am a technophobe. I'm afraid of the internet <laughs> and cameras and all such things. I work in a dark room by myself, so no. I have nothing else to sell. I can't help it. So, when you wrote the film, did you do it in pencil since you know the techno? I just chiseled up the slate. <laughs> That's what I did. Like Moses coming down from the mountain. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> Wow, you guys are so fun. I know you guys had a great time. Just the whole vibe you guys put together. How long did it actually take to put the whole thing together? Um, from, well, writing, you know, Courtney had that a while ago. Once Leah found the script, I think she took a year of fundraising. I was brought on about three, four months before the shoot as director. So we spent four months hiring, getting stuff together, and then it was an 18-day shoot and one year of editing. No way. 
24 at the end, actually, now that I think of it. Somewhere between 18 and 24 days. So did you guys know each other before this, or you guys just merged together like a family? We merged together, merged together like a family. Yeah, like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah. How is Operation Brown Sugar going? Dude! What? I had to tell somebody. I've got a job, an apartment, no kids, and I've never been to jail. I'll have them lined up like jet centerfolds. Well, Leah has done a lot of television, um, prime time, I, I moved, daytime. Yeah, I moved to Los Angeles thinking that I would do more film, but I just have done a lot more television. So you can actually look me up on imdb.com for like a full, list of my, a full list of my film film and TV credits. But yeah, a lot of TV um, primarily. And then, um, yeah, so a lot of television, tons of theater. Um, Phyllis is very modest. Uh, I play Catherine in the film, I'm Through With White Girls, but Phyllis is a very, um, like an amazing actress. She went to Yale School of Drama. Um, with all the other fabulous people that have come up there and from there and she's definitely going to do wonderful things. She did Broadway last year for the very first time so that's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> We're like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we shot a pilot for Yeah, we for did Fox a pilot for Fox together. Ago. What else? And um, yeah, and then, so that's pretty much our, our acting is we're just, yeah, doing a lot of, still, still working. The film has been great because it's gotten us both a lot of work as well. Um, and then also, I, someone had asked, an often question I get is uh, how my hair was in locks for the film and how we did all the colors because Catherine, that's the character, her, her hair color changes colors. Um, almost daily <laughs> for her. With her mood. And um, actually the way that we did my hair, it was a really long, tremendous process and so I won't bore you with the details. So it was taking it out. Oh, it was unbelievable. Which I did. How many hours was it? What she a sister. She fell asleep <laughs> while I was working on it. Anyway. What a sister, huh? I think it was something like eight hours. It was eight hours. Uh, yeah, it took eight hours to put them in. Um, an amazing woman from Senegal braided my hair and then wrapped it with the blonde and then dreaded the outside. And I wore that for two months to get it nice and fuzzy. Swam in the ocean with it, get it really fuzzy. And uh, and then we put in. And then we added the colors, yeah. Um, those were tie-ins that actually her wonderful uh, husband was kind enough because he had dreadlocks for many years to make for me. Um, they were added hair so that, because any, on any given day I might wear like three or four different colors depending on what scenes we were shooting out of order. So the colors had to come in and out quickly. And so yeah, he, he figured that one out, which was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. How have you been? Let the people know, Neil Soul, what's going on with you? What's going on, Neil Soul, Lamont Rucker? I'm teasing her because she keeps mispronouncing my name, believe it or not. What's up, ATL? Just in town for a little while, working. So just thought, you know, we'd hang so out for a little while. Working. What kind of work you do? Are you a poet? Uh, what do you do? Who are you? Who is Lamont? Okay. Let the people know. We don't have enough time for that show. Okay. But what we do have enough time for is uh, I'm, I'm an actor. So I'm, oh, okay. oh, that's right. We got to get Neo Soul. Yeah. See that? <laughs> Uh, I'm an actor of uh, film, television, and, and stage, and I'm actually working on a, uh, in town, just working on a pilot with uh, with Tyler Perry. Projects, do they have a name, or is that top secret? Uh, some of them are top secret, you know, but... Uh, the well, ones you know, that aren't? The ones that aren't. One project in particular is called The Inevitable Undoing of Jay Brooks. It's a romantic comedy that will uh, scheduled to be released this spring. Uh, I have no date as of yet, but... Uh, are you the main character right or are you the... I'm the, yeah, one of the leads, the co-lead, co-male lead, myself and my best friend. What, could you tell us what, what role you play just a little bit? Oh, yeah, my character's name is Drake. Tall, handsome, Ooh, educated what uh, attorney. And uh, my best friend is <laughs> kind of the opposite, <laughs> short, nerdy guy. You know, I'm, I'm actually, he's a black guy, but he's in... He kind of is in the indie rock scene, so we're childhood best friends, you know. Um, but uh, you know, he's just had a whole lot of problems dating and so forth and so on. And throughout the course of the film, you see how my life has evolved, and I'm very professionally successful and all of this, and I'm getting ready to get married. And you see my fiance, and yet here he is in another relationship that just blew up in his face. So it kind of challenges him to get his life together, and. Uh, to check himself and figure out why his life isn't turning out the way it should and why he's not being the man he's supposed to be. So it's actually, you know, it's it's really cute. So there's a lot of different adventures. and Is it like comedy? Oh, definitely. It's, it's very funny. Did you have to audition or was it scripted mm -hmm. for you? Um, no, I did audition, but uh, it's definitely a role that I 
you know, that I understand was, uh, you know, possibly created with, with me in mind. I, I do know that I was, uh, I, I don't necessarily, I can't say that it was written for me. Right. But, uh, but no, I had to audition just like anybody else. Do you see a lot of uh, your characteristics in this um, character? A lot of my own personal characteristics. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think that's the one tall, of the things. Tall, good looking. Well, I mean, as, aside from what anybody might think, or you know, maybe certain obvious physical things, I think that the easiest thing to do, and I think what most actors sometimes get away from, is uh, you know, just when you when you have a strong sense of yourself, it's actually a better idea to to do the work that's very close, you know, to who you already naturally are. It was not about color or class. You're just afraid to commit. I'm pulling for you to find somebody that you love so much, you can't even help it. I was born in Canada. Canada? Does that, mean, does that make you African-Canadian? Actually, I'm African-Canadian, because my mother's white and my dad is black. Yeah, I didn't know black girls grew blue hair. Well, I didn't know you could smoke a cigarette through a straw. <laughs> <laughs> have one of the best characters in this film you could ever come in contact with. I'm not even gonna brag, I'm gonna just let him brag about himself. Would you tell the people how you are? What you got going? How you doing people? My name is Anthony Montgomery. I play Jay Brooks. I'm the lead and I'm through with the white girls and I don't brag on myself. I just say I work really hard and we have a film that I'm very proud of. So I want everybody to come out and support. Is this your first film? This is my first film as a lead. Yes, I used to be on Star Trek Enterprise, so I was a series regular, and I've got a whole allegiance of Trekkies, Trekkers, pardon me guys, out there that follow. But as far as carrying a film, this was my first one after our series ended, and it was, an, it was a wonderful journey. Did you like it? I loved it. My like girl. I said, like I said, if I had more than two thumbs, you, you guys would have uh. them, and I've been bragging. And people love the film. The characters are so real, so raw. Thank you. Was it a stretch or was it fun for you? Oh, it was a blast and it was a stretch. It was the hardest thing that we had to do was to find a way to make my character likable because he was such a womanizer that I assumed that when I read it, women are going to hate me all over the world. <laughs> But the director, Jennifer Sharp, who did an excellent job, and this was her directorial debut in a feature, she helped me to carve out some nuances for Jay and to find a charm and charisma about him that made him likable. He was definitely likable. I heard so much laughter and just, it was such a fun movie. People Good. were gonna love it. Do you have an email address or website so people can know more about you? Anthony-Montgomery.com, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-M-O-N-T-G-O-M-E-R-Y.com. And yeah, stay tuned, because this is my first. I don't expect it to be my last. That's not my plan. I'm sure there's something so massively wrong with her. Jay, you say that about every girl you date. You are immature, you have issues with commitment, you have a silly job, silly friends, you're cheap, and your comprehension of romance is a joke. I'm in the presence of a very beautiful woman who plays a very interesting character, and she's going to tell us all about it, along with her name and her staff. Hi, I am Elena Reed Hall, and I play Jerry Moore in um, I'm Through It White Girls. And it was a very interesting project. Um, I, I actually did it as a favor for Phyllis Johnson. I worked with her at Yale a few years back. And you know how you say, well, when you're in California, give me a call. Well, she did. So uh, I took on the project, and a lot of my friends came on board, and we just had a blast. Jennifer let us ad lib and do what we do, you know. We we acted like she was directing us, but you know, we just did what we did. And it was fun, it was fabulous. This is my second time seeing it. Really? Yeah. You're yeah. a fan. I'm a fan of the film, yes. So am I. Um I guess my last question for you is what's next for Turn Soul Films? That's a good question. Well Phyllis and I create we should both answer this. Okay. Just jump in anytime. So Phyllis and I created Turn Soul Films because we were really excited about making um, as you said before, content that's multicultural and that's for an American audience. Um, basically the world that, that we live in, that we see, but we feel like we don't see enough of in, in media. And so um, I'm Through With White Girls is our first piece. It's exactly in the vein of what we want to do. And we have 
two more scripts that are burning holes in our pockets. Yeah. Um, one is another romantic comedy, much like I'm through with White Girls, and one is a thriller uh, that's also a lot of fun. And so we're looking for funding. <laughs> Anyone, you know, just you go know to turnsoul.com. Turnsoul.com. Let us know. Reach us through the corporate. Just click on it. Yeah. Or well, email well, either one of us. So, um, yeah, so we're looking for funding for our next two projects, and um, then we're just uh, handling the sort of final part of selling I'm Through with White Girls, so the distribution. Great. And I want to jump in and say, if you want to support our film, I'm Through with White Girls, yep. you can check it out on YouTube. You can go to There's the online trailer. space. If you go to YouTube and just do I'm Through with White Girls, You'll it'll find pop it. up. Um, you can join our mailing list. Which is off That's of our good. website, which is www.turnsoul.com. So www.turnsoul. And if you join the mailing list, then we'll send you not annoyingly often updates, just like once every couple months. Just once every couple months. Forward to your friends who are in the area as well yeah. on screening. Uh, and so, you can also go on to IMDb if you're signed in for all those actors out there that know. Yeah, about for it. those of you who've seen the film, if you want to comment online, that's really helppful. Any write ups or comments are helpful, just people like read this that. one. Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to thank Neo Soul for helping us uh, yeah. get the word out. I really don't see black chicks digging this guy. I, mean, no. I don't. I told you so. I knew these sisters was going to win. You're not seeing double, you're just seeing double excitement because, like I said, if I had more than two thumbs, they'd be up because the movie that I said was going to win did win. How are you ladies feeling? We're doing really, We're doing really well. well. We're, We're really so excited. Well. Oh, gosh. Are you not, I know you can't be surprised. Yeah, I'm so excited. I, I should say I'm, I'm Leah and this is Phyllis Johnson. The film is I'm Through with White Girls. We produced it. And I'm and acting in it as well. We are and, so uh, over can't the moon believe about we, it. Yeah. Can't believe that we won. We were just we so won. shocked. And this is actually our, our um, sixth best feature award at festivals. So yeah. we were just, we couldn't believe it. Couldn't so believe we're it. Really excited. In Atlanta, we love you because you guys have supported us I at know. Atlanta International Film Festival and, and the Urban, Urban Media, Media Makers. Maker Film yeah. Festival has supported our film. And I am so truly happy for you guys. I mean, I want to I want to scream, but it'll probably be so low <laughs> class because that's we can scream with you. <laughs> so you guys it's the U.S. This, best uh, feature blockbuster so award. I am so proud of you. Like, thank you I'm, so thank much. You. you deserve it. Tell the people <laughs> who don't know what I'm talking about. Tell them about the movie. Or our, our film is called I'm Through with White Girls, The Inevitable Undoing of Jay Brooks. And you can go to YouTube and you can type in I'm Through with White Girls. Or Google it. You can Google it. You can go to our website, which is www.turnsoul.com. T-U-R-N-S-O-U-L. And you go there. You can go there too to, to join the mailing list if you want to find out when it comes out on DVD. And uh, it's a great little romantic comedy feature, and we had such a good time making it, and we have an awesome time showing it. So, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Neo Soul, we all have it. Thank you for giving it. Anthony Montgomery, yes, they are. That was so poetic. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs>